You're ready. You're ready. You're ready. Yes. 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 You have you just have stepped out into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Are we on? Are we on? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I am your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And oh boy, we have a special, special show tonight. Tonight, we want to talk about who is the best New York City point guard ever. There's been a lot of debates going on. There's been some conversations online. I, I heard Sham Guard talk. I heard Ross Strickland talk. Um, go back here, Kenny Smith, Mark Jackson. Everybody had who they thought was their best. Even the guys who were considered the best was talking about guys who came before them. And i like to start off tonight by just apologizing to the Koozie family for leaving you off the poster. I should have put you on that poster. You are well-deserved to be on that poster. All right? So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to go down the top 10, who I consider was the top 10, right? And we're going to go by errors. So we're going to break it down something like this. When we talk about the most successful New York City floor general. There have to be no other than Bob Cousy. Andrew Jackson, great. Holy Cross legend. And of course, top 50 player of all time, Boston Celtics. He quickly earned the nickname Houdini of the hardwood because of his flashy ball handling and passing abilities. You already know that's New York City style all the way. Kuzi helped the Boston Celtics capture six titles and won the regular season MVP. Rare for a point guard. Two all-star game MVPs and 13 all-star appearances. So you already know why I had to apologize because there's no way in hell I should have left off Bob Cousy off that poster that I put up yesterday. So again, my apologies to the Cousy family. Now, that was the 1950s. Now we move on to the 60s. We move on to the 60s with a Brooklyn native, boys high legend. Yes, indeed. Lenny Wilkins made his debut with the then St. Louis Hawks. This Brooklyn native was named to the All-Star team nine times and once led the league in assists. He also finished second in second place behind Wilt Chamberlain for the 1967-68 MVP award. Wilkins later enjoyed success on the sidelines as he set the all-time record for most wins by a head coach. Salute to Lenny Wilkins, for sure. So now we move on to the 70s. The league witnessed the entrance of Nate Tiny Archibald, 1970. The former UTEP guard, made six all-star appearances and was named to the all-NBA first team three times. He is the only player ever to lead the league in both scoring and assists 
in the same season in 1972. Wow, what a season. 34 points, 11.4 assists per game. Now that's saying something. You already know where I'm going now. Okay, because we're moving on to the 80s. Now, you have that 10-year gap. We produced another point guard, right? It's been going like that for a long time. But this next basketball head took what they was doing and brought it back to the hood. And there was an explosion with Dwayne Pearl Washington, another boys high great. May rest in peace. Pro Washington was the 13th overall pick of the 1986 draft. Washington is regarded as a New York City playground legend. So, when it came to him putting on for Boys High, putting on for all the leagues around the city, because he would show up while he was playing high school ball, while he was playing college ball, he was coming back to the neighborhoods, solidifying his names in the streets and in all the playgrounds around New York City. But his pro career only lasted three seasons. In the league with the New Jersey Nets and Miami Heat, playing only 194 ball games. So people could have that argument there. But again, I don't judge people on what they just did in the NBA. I'm talking about the whole totality of the per the player and how many people they touched along with their stats. All right? So, and I want to say pause on that because I'm on cam and Mace coming after me on this one. No doubt. Salute to it is what it is for sure. Now, during that same time, you had a guy by the name of Kenny Smith. That's right, Archbishop Malloy great, North Carolina great, and NBA champion. But people don't really know that about Kenny because he's been an NBA analyst for a very long time. Now, this former Tar Heel never made an all-star team, but he helped the Houston Rockets win two back-to-back -back champions championships. You can't deny Kenny was a big factor in those games, hitting those three-point shots, getting Houston out of that shooting slump, as we would say. But when they was packing in all in an Elijah one and nobody else could hit that shot, Kenny came up big. So salute to Kenny. Now, we talking about Pearl Washington, Kenny Smith, and this basketball head, Mark Jackson. These three guys was in high school around the same time. So there was a lot of battles going on. Just imagine having those three compete throughout the city during the 80s. It was a madhouse. Mark Jackson, he came in getting drafted by the hometown Knicks with the 18th pick overall. He won Rookie of the Year honors, and he made his team's only trip to the All-Star game in 1989. So he got an All-Star game under his belt. Played 17 seasons in the league with seven different teams and currently ranks second on all-time assist list behind John Stockton. I think now he's probably like third. Somebody help me out and let me know. But I think he's third right about now. I'm going to check in a few minutes. So now, we're still in the 80s. We're still in the 80s because there was a guard up in Truman making noise. He was making so much noise that he took his team, which was undersized, and won the whole thing. State championship. Then went on to Oak Hill Academy and became a star around the country before he entered the pole. And his basketball head name is Rod Strickland. Rod Strickland, the Bronx native, even though they already had Mark Jackson running the show, they chose to draft Rod Strickland. 
Hmm. We're going to get to the funny business that the NBA has done to a lot of New York City guards and players throughout the years. But I just didn't see this making sense. But they both had great careers, neither, neither the less. Strickland backed up Jackson for a season and a half before being traded to San Antonio, where he became a starter. Like Jackson, Strickland went on to play 17 NBA seasons and maybe one of the best players to never make an all-star team. He averaged 17 points, eight assists per game for five consecutive seasons. Now, think about that. We have one of the greatest point guards ever to play the game. Average 17 and 8 and never make an all-star game. We all have issues with that. If y'all want to see why and what happened, y'all need to scroll, go on my page, YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe if you didn't subscribe. And check out that Raw Strickland episode. He explains it all. Salute to my guy, Raw Strickland. And this guard shook up the world. Kenny Anderson, arguably the greatest New York City high school point guard of all time, arrived on the NBA scene. He was selected by the Nets with second overall pick in that year's draft. Anderson struggled in his rookie year, but later emerged as one of the league's better point guards and was a starter in the 1994 All-Star Game. He had a decent 14-year career, but never became a superstar. Some predicted he would. Listen, you play 14 years in the league, you play 10 years or more, man, that's a plus. So, now we move on to my school, Abraham Lincoln, where I watched this young man well, he's a grown man now, but when he was a kid, I watched him come to our gym. And we just knew he was going to be the one. We just knew it. He was going to be the one. And he did not disappoint. Stephon Marbury made his highly anticipated NBA debut in 1996 after one year at Georgia Tech. And much like Anderson before him, he was expected to become New York City's next great point guard. Starbury began his career with the Minnesota Timberwolves as he teamed up with Kevin Garnett to form one of the league's most exciting young duos. He spent two and a half seasons in Minnesota before being traded three times in the next six years. Marbury played 13 seasons in the league with an impressive 19.3. That should be like, I think 20, but let's say 19 and eight. 19 and eight. 19 and eight is definitely Hall of Fame material. All right? But I'm not going to get there because I'll be biased because y'all going to say, yo, he from Lincoln, so he going to say that. I get it, I get it, I get it. It's all love. So we can run down the multitude of NBA players that came from New York City that were point guards. But one that I made sure I put up there, and that was Rafer Skip to my Lou Austin. Rafer did it the hard way. He didn't play high school ball like that because he was el ineligible at certain points of the year. So he had to make his name throughout the streets of New York City. And he did that throughout all the parks, creating a buzz. And then when the sneaky company and one came around and put out a highlight reel to sell their merch and their sneakers, it featured Ray for Austin skipping on everybody throughout the city and everybody wanted to know who was that kid lighting up Rucker Park and EBC when the hype 
of the hip hop and basketball came together during that time in Harlem. And Rafer was that star. You could say him and Smush Parker, because I got to ask Smush in that as well, were the only guys in New York City that made it from the basketball street level to the NBA. So that definitely needs to be commended. But we also had guards like Jamal Tinsley, Khalid Reeves, Eric Barkley, Omar Cook, Guard Sham Guard, and so many more. We'll be here forever naming them all. So let's talk about that for a minute, right? Um, let me just read off what people are saying here. Um, da, 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 da. Pearl Washington, Pearl Washington, Tiny Pearl, Pearl. Wow, this is this is this is Raw Strickland, Raw Strickland. Okay, okay, Raw Strickland, Kenny Anderson. <laughs> Who's Kenny? Raw Strickland, Marbury. Yeah, let's we we're gonna talk about the individual skills, right? Because we we want to make sure that we include what they did on the hardwood, but we also want to compare them as players. All right, because some did some things better than others. What's going on, Delbert? What's going on? Salute, salute. Eric Kennedy, salute, salute. Appreciate you buying the building. But let's think about Bob Cousy. Had a great career with the Boston Celtics. And he was the one that identified Tiny Archibald, that New York City connection. Tiny was able to come in, shine, and do his thing. Now, that's what we call looking out for each other. Yeah, Joe Hammond. Joe Hammond could have been another New York City uh, NBA great, right? But, you know, hopefully Joe will be on the show soon. Um, I was just with him and Sam Worthen last week, and we talked about both of them coming on the show. Now I'm going to bring in my guy, Ron Souffrant, CEO of A-Game Podcast. So I'm bringing my guy. What up, what up, fam? OG, peace, peace. How you peace. doing, brother? What's going on with you? Man, listen, man. I I've I been the whirlwind. Um, you know, I, I got a couple of calls this week, and I was just like, okay, I I, I need to set up this thing, right? Uh -huh. Right? I need to set this theme up. So when people see these people that come on the platform, that who's gonna be coming on the platform soon, they'll understand the method to the madness. Right. Right? So um just talking about the top New York City point guards ever. Man, that's that. Man. That's a that's a crazy debate right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is not ESPN, so we we ain't gonna do debate style. We just gonna have a discussion, just right. you know, on, on what we seen, what we were able to witness, and what we know about. Definitely right. the history. Um, I, I ran off the list of guys you seen the post, right? right? All right. the guys that we on there, and but I started off the show by apologizing to the Koozie family for not having Bob Koozie on there. Like okay. I totally played myself. Yeah, I mean it's an honest mistake, honest mistake. Yeah, but he he kind of started started that, and I think we're looking at the perspective of who who was inspired in our neighborhoods, right? right. Who inspired right. us? And his name rarely came up, but with the older guys, they'll tell you, like, Bob Cousy was that guy. Of course. You know? Of course. And, and then it goes Lenny Wilkins, right? And then Tiny Archibald. Did you know Tiny Archibald only played one year at Clinton? I didn't. I did not know that. Only one year? One year of varsity? That's it? He was ineligible for the rest of the years. So, 
what year? What so? What year did he play? Freshman, his, sophomore, his senior year. Only oh, so he was ineligible his first three years and only played his senior year. Facts. And and then was able to garner a scholarship to UTEP. Did he go to junior college first? Or he went straight to UTEP. Think he went to junior. He went to junior college first. Think he went to junior college first. Then he went to UTEP. Yes. Okay. Okay. I did not. I didn't. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. I was, I was, I was blown away. I was like, yo, for real? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Tiny didn't play. Um, he went to, uh, Arizona Western and then mm. he didn't do that. Arizona. I think that's where Booger went. Right. Is that, is that where Booger went? Arizona Western? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not certain, but I mean, you know, when, when you talk about that, I think it always turns into obviously, uh, a major debate, one. Two, I think a lot of times people who, like, I'm sure you got to see Pearl. Yes. And yeah. his prime, right? And when I yeah. say prime, I mean like high school, college. I saw him, I saw him in Soul in the Hole in high school. Okay, so see, so now look, you got to see Pearl and I wasn't still Pearl when he got to college because he was still Pearl. Fact. And then obviously, you know, the year or two that he spent in the league, but this is always going to be my thing. I don't think, see, if you say Pearl, right? No one can say to you, nah, you can't say Pearl because so-and-so, you know why, in my opinion, they can't say no to you because you saw Pearl play. You saw Pearl play. And you've seen Kenny <clears throat> um, and a lot of the other guys who we consider to be, you know, some of the greatest point guards that ever I've played. Kenny, I seen Mark, I seen See? See? Uh, Kenny Anderson, See? I seen um, Ross Strickland. I, I played was with Ross Strickland against Kenny. Wow. Uh, Kenny what year? What, what year? What year did you play against Rod? And where? We're like I played with Rod on the Empire State team. In high school? I was in, it was my senior high school. I was the only guy in New York City high school, in, in the high school, playing wow. on the college team, wow. uh, the Empire State Games, Dope. which is New York State Olympics. Right. Dope. Yeah, Dope. so Dope. like, Boo Harvey was in that team, mm. Derek Chivas, mm. uh, Ross Strickland, um, Dow Middleton, Prime Minister Pete Knight from Third Base, the rapper. Yo, you know what's crazy? I didn't even know that um was um, who, who do you say again i didn't hear you i'm sorry his dad pete nice's dad was ray nash is, is ray nash yes so i listen i had no idea like all throughout my childhood i had friends a couple of friends of mine who went to bishop ford and they're talking about you know oh coach ray nash ray nash it wasn't until i was like in my late teens that i found out Pete Nice was Peter Nash and he used to play. I had no idea. That's crazy. Yo, this is how crazy it was. He used to tell us he was gonna be a rapper. Really? We didn't believe him. He had the he had the phone book with Russell Simmons' name in it. I think he had like L L a couple other people, but we thought he was capping. Another guy who was on that team was Dwayne Shake Martin. Really? Well, yeah. they said Dwayne, from, they said above the rim. Above the rim. They said they said he was they said he was like like legit. They said he was like that. He was like that. They said he was like that. They yes. said he was like that. So, you know, again, I didn't want to deviate from my point. So, so my point was you know, I don't think people can argue with you even if listen, if somebody said, right? Tiny, Pearl, Rod, Kenny and Steph, right? I'm, I'm, for me, I won't go on the record of saying this, but for me, those are my top five all time greatest point guards to ever come out of New York City. That's, that's for me. Now, there's a whole bunch of other guys that, that should be considered as, you know, greats. And we know they're greats, but for me, that's my, my top five. If you said any one of those names in that top five, if you said, yo, 
to, in my opinion, Kenny's the greatest point guard ever come out of New York City. I can't argue with that. If you said Steph, if you said Pearl, if you said Tiny, if you said Rod, if you said Mark Jackson, right? Facts. I, I can't, how can you argue with that? I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's relegated to just one person because all of these individuals are from different eras, right? They're all gods. All Facts. of them are gods. Facts. Okay? And so, and then the guys, like you said, the Mark Jacksons, and you got the Kenny Smiths, and then, like, you know, it's like, it's just so many other people. So it's like, to, to be able to just be like, no, it's this person, and then that's it. I don't think that that is, you know, mm, I don't know if that's fair, but again, if you say, yo, you know what, you're wrong, I'm, I'm going with, um, I'm going with Pearl. I'll be like, excellent choice. Yeah, why not? Pearl, Tiny, like I said, Rod, Steph. I mean, these guys are guys that I think throughout their, in, in their era, transcended the game in some form um, or fashion. They transcended the game and, and you know, the impact of the game. Um, you know, I, I feel like, man, and I want, I, I, want to, I want to tell you this too, I feel like you know, they should do something, man, like, like, you know, even if it's us, come up with something where we, you know, memorialize the, these guys, like, because, you know, we know, we know guys like, like, we know they're not gonna put Rod in the Hall of Fame, we know that, but, but, but to us, he's a god. Tiny, Pearl, you know what I'm saying, rest in peace, again, Steph, and then you got all the, like, just so many guys, Kemba Walker, you know, like, is there so many guys? It's like, you got a Tinsley, Ed Coda, Kareem Reed, like, you know what I'm saying? Rafer, Sham God, like, like, Booger, you know, like, there's so many guys where it's like, they need something, man, something. If it's not, I don't know. I don't know what it is, not a New York City Hall of Fame. I don't know what, but just to you know, pay homage to them. Like, listen, you know, like the, these guys were, 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 were those guys, man. Well, there, there is something that's being planned right now uh, with Coach Ted Gustus. They're putting together uh, a New York City Basketball Hall of Fame. Oh, wow. Wow. And, you know, he, he always said, you know, you know, Glenn, I want to definitely have you on board with what we're nice. doing. Nice. Um, so you know, I'm bringing the fam. Um, so that's that's definitely something that's in play. Um, oh. I had I had a conversation this 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 weekend with uh, one of my my guys. I, I run a Brevo tournament with, and we had the same conversation. He was like, Pearl and only lasted three years in the league. He's not better than nobody because he didn't wow. go to the league. And, and I was saying, I don't judge people like that. See? Yes. And I mentioned this in the beginning. I just don't go on stats. Right. 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 And, and those accomplishments, I go on on the hearts that these people touched. Yes. Right. When we talked about that, we talked about those moments that will live in people's minds forever. Yeah. You know, you should hear some of the names that people are putting down you know, they're going outside to listen, like, yo, but what about this person? What about that person? No disrespect. But again, we not ESPN, fam. We right. just not here to argue, just to argue. Right, right, right. right. And it's and, not even and, that. I ain't trying to argue. It's just, you know. Like, no, we, 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 we can have a fun debate, which we're going to, we definitely going to be doing. But yeah. I think sometimes people make these lists just so they can have arguments safe. Absolutely. And, and all these guys deserve spotlight you know mind yeah. you we didn't even get to the girls right we didn't oh. get to the, the you oh. know the standing bobbits and right. you know right epiphanies, epiphanies right epiphanies oh <laughs> we, we, didn't, we didn't go there yeah. so just imagine we open up that can of worms right. I, I just get uh sick and tired of hearing you know other guys especially dudes who have these podcasts in the league downplay what the impact of the guys in New York City had. Right. And, and I think right. this is why we here. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. I thought it was dope, man. I thought it was I thought it was phenomenal. I thought it was dope fire that you um, you know, you put that post up because I think 
instead of which 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 is what a lot of people tend to do when they see something like that they tend to look at it as a debate like a like you know we you know we're going to debate and we're going to we're going to argue and we, and you know we we're, we're going to get to the we're going to get to the uh talking about the stats and who lasted like you said who lasted longer in the league and he didn't even play and this it's like listen you know i always say this like if i grew up on your block and you were my og and i came up under you and you played and and, and i watched you before i got on the court before i was able to get on the court i used to watch you no one can tell me that you're not a legend to me facts no one can no one no one no one can say I, if i'm if they're gonna ask me well who were some people that inspired you who were some of the best players you ever saw play my og Pooh from around the way that was like he was he was he was god to us he was you know so again a lot of these individuals that are being mentioned even the even if you if you have a list and some people are not on the list, it's it's like there's no disrespect. You ask the person what's your top five, they give you a top five. That's their opinion. Facts. That's it. That's just that's Facts. their opinion. You know, when you put that, when you put that um, when you put that post up, it was like you should I looked at it and I was just like, for me, I'm always like, you can't tell me that we don't have some of the greatest gods to ever play the game. We can debate about that all day. We can debate about it. Chicago is phenomenal. California is phenomenal, right? And you got um, a lot of the cities that have uh, pretty much um, because they have a lot more guys in the league, Seattle and stuff like that. But, but just as a whole collectively and the history of the game, you mean to tell me that New York City, that you put up that list, and that was just a short list, right? Facts. Short list. You mean only put me up nine guys? I could have easily put up way more, but only nine, nine guys could fit in the frame. So nine, nine. You mean to tell me that we don't have some of the some of the the the, the greatest point guards to ever play the game? You mentioned Boo Harvey. It's like like how about rest in peace, Dave Edwards? Sure. I like like well. well like, come on. And then, and then, then, right? Play devil's advocate. The younger guys. Omar Cook. Andre Barrett. Talik Brown. You, you, you know, like, Kemba Walker. Mm. Like, Sebastian Telfair. And then you got guys that are, that are, that are not, not, not beneath them, but then you still got more guys. You still got more. So you can't, you know. I think people love to rep their cities, rightfully so, but let's just be honest when we're doing it. Let's be honest. Man, when we do it, we take over the country. Absolutely. We take over the country. We take Absolutely. over the hearts and minds of all the ball players around the country yeah. when yeah. we step on the scene. Yeah, yeah. Man, this this is so crazy, right? Um, I, I would just, you know, you go back and you you look at, you know, the, the highlight reels. And I had to sit back because my, my OG, John Johnson, another great point guard. He didn't make it to the league, but boy, was he nice. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He, he said to me, he was like, yo, I grew up watching Tiny. It's my OG. <clears throat> so he grew up watching, seeing it. Wow. wow. Seeing Lenny Wilkins, like, games, like, you know, the later on, but he watched Tiny and Tiny is the only point guard, I think only player in NBA history to lead the league up in assists and scoring. Yes, sir. I think Will Chamberlain did it as well. It, with rebounding? What he did it, rebounding? No, I point think I think one year he averaged like 25 assists or something like that, like some stupid <laughs> number. <laughs> like so, but I think he's the only point guard to 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 win the scoring title and assist and assist ever. What does that tell you about? You know what I mean? Like what? Is, what is, in what the seventies when dudes' fouls was like clothes getting clothes wrestling. on? It was, it was wrestling. <laughs> they was they were wrestling. They were wrestling. Facts. They were, Facts. Facts. They were wrestling. You know. Yeah, watching Gilbert Arenas. You know. Love yeah. the show, man. Love yeah. Gil Arenas, man. 
Uh, but sometimes you piss me off when you talk about my guys, man. Yeah, yeah. And I, he he I, was I saying, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think um a lot of times Gilbert, I think I don't know, I don't think Gilbert means any harm. I think no, I also no. think it's um what do you how do they call that? Um what is that? Clickbait, not clickbait, but you know, I think I think he does that to um get attention, stir up some not controversy, but you know, I guess to shake up the room a little bit. Yeah, yeah, he does a great job of that. Yeah. He does a great job yeah. of that. Um, but then my guy John Johnson said, you know, I mentioned I was like, you know, we just talking about overall talent, right? Just overall talent, right? We got all them guys can handle what New right. York City guys can do, right? Right. Everybody got a nice handle. All these guys could pass, right? They were floor generals. All of them had high IQs. But all of them wasn't the best shooters. Like down the line, like that's something, a tag that we've always been hit with. You know, our yeah. guys, we have everything else, but we can't shoot. Right. Right? And then somebody like Steph comes along, <clears throat> and he's shooting where Steph was shooting at. In high school, oh gee, I was, I was, I was, a, I was, I was a witness. I was front and center. His, his, his. He's two years ahead of me. So, and I, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but no, no, because I, I already hear this. I, 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 and I already knew where you were going with it. I didn't say that, and I, and I said that's why you, you know, that's why you, you, you are so excellent at what you do. Once you started, I said I already know where you're going with it. My freshman year, Steph was a junior. I'm hearing about Steph. I'm hearing about Steph. I'm learning more and more now about New York City basketball, just, just the landscape and the history. And it was like, you know, I'm at Grady. I don't know anything about Grady until I get there. And I'm like, Mo Brown and, you know, the Ephraim Whiteheads and James Hectors and, you know, the, the, the just, I'm like, the D flights. And I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. And they're like, nah, it's, it's, listen, it's, it's, it's another dude that's running the city. He's running the country. I'm like, who is Stephon Marbury? I'm hearing the name, hearing the name. I saw him play for the first time at Grady. I was a freshman. He was a junior. And he might have had, he might have had maybe 15 points. 15 points. But watching him warm up and then watching him throughout the game, I knew. I said, listen, you know, this dude is is different. He was OG, he was warming up, shooting jump shots jump shots from half court hold on 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 <laughs> definitely definitely got blow. i need you to explain this for people because you know seeing it up close and seeing it on tv can be a lot different from the eyesight looking right explain to the people how high this means to get off the floor on them jump shots okay well um now this is something that I used to hear about, right? It, it was almost like, almost like a mythical tale when you hear about it. One of my good friends in high school, Anthony Glover, um, he's from Coney Island, so yeah. you know he he knows everything about Coney Island. So he's like, yo, like yo, yo, Steph, you know, we talking, yo, man, Steph, yeah, Steph, be pulling from that. And you know, you hear you hear the whispers, and you're like, they they're exaggerating. He's not shooting from from half court, not actual half court. Listen, OG. Game getting ready to start. He's warming up. And, and you know, he starts out by the three-point line. He's shooting. I'm, I'm watching him. I'm just watching him. He's backing up, backing up, backing up. Next thing you know, he's, he's, he's half court. Jump shots, warming up. Not even breaking a sweat. Jump shots. And then, to top it off, he's, he's doing windmills on the layup line. Not, not like... Like what Mike used to do. You remember how Mike used to lean and like, no, he was doing, his body was straight in the air and he's bringing the ball up and he's windmilling. So then, and that to me, for me, as a kid, I understood. I'm like, he's a point guard. He's about 6'2". He passes the hell out of the ball. He can shoot it. He's bigger than everybody else, right? He can jump. I'm like, 
When have we ever seen anything like this? When have we ever? He was a ever... complete, complete ball player. Oh yeah, head oh, to yeah. toe. Oh yeah, catching alleys like, like, and it's crazy because I think when people when you when people hear about it, right? They're like, ah, you saw all of that in the league. You saw it in college and in the league. He was catching alleys. He was doing windmills. He shot from half court. His vision was 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 was, you know, Steph. Steph. People don't, and they won't give him credit, but Steph is is is. Has to be, has to be, you know, um, one of the best point guards to ever play the game. And I'm talking about in the league. Period. I'm talking about in the league. Ever. In the like, world. You, you, in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, his vision was crazy. His vision was, was, his vision was crazy. Then he could shoot. And like I said, he was, you know, he was strong. He was quick. And so it's like, I feel like Steph... Pretty much, and that stigma that was placed on New York City guards. Once Steph arrived and made his mark, I think that stigma slowly, slowly faded away because now you started to get guys that understood, like, man, yo, I like, I gotta work on my jump shot. Like, I can't, I can't be one dimensional. I can't be a guard that's that can't knock down a 15, 20. 20 foot or 25 foot, you know? So, Thanks. but Steph, Steph, yeah. Seeing him play, watching him play, I, I, I was telling a friend of mine the other day, I'm so happy that we came, we came up, came up in that era because Steph, again, is one of the greatest, one of the greatest guards to ever, ever. One of the greatest point guards to ever play. And then I got, an, also got an opportunity around that time to watch Sham God, um, to watch Ed Coda, you know, Kareem Reed, Shaheen Holloway. It, it was, it, you know, like, like these guys were like, when you saw them, you were like, okay, I see why these guys are considered the best in the country. I see why. But, but Steph, I think, hands down, was at the top of the food chain when it came to um, being a pure point guard. It was my senior year. No, Steph's senior year was 1995, correct? Yes, yes. So it was the year after I graduated college. And I think it was the day before bro day, because my brother and Slice, who was Tiny's brother, yes. um, that was something they did for they, their, their boy Rick, who passed away. Nice. But it was that weekend that we all played pickup. I remember this because all of us came back to Coney Island. All the guys who played with Lincoln, all the guys that played at Grady, all the street dudes who played ball locally in Corny Allen, who maybe, you know, was still balling, but didn't go to college, but these guys had game. And we all out there playing the 23rd. And Steph is going absolutely bonkers. <laughs> He's shooting from half court, screaming out, I'm the best. <laughs> no way. No way. No Mind way. Mind you, we have all of us out there, like all the ball players, like playing pickup. And he's absolutely destroying everyone. We all was, you know, grown men at that time, but he still was the best player on the court. Because I was just amazed, like, Jesus Christ. If you ever been to the 23rd court, it's a long court. It's not short, but, and I don't think it had any, it had a three point line, but that didn't matter. Banging it, catching oops, throwing dishes. And at the end of the game, I was like, man, you're going to have an awesome NBA career. Mm. Like, you just knew it. I, I knew it when he was a kid, but playing against it, seeing it, you know, bumping and grinding and challenging him and seeing all the things he had in his bag in his senior year was incredible, mm. was crazy. 
you know. Um, isn't that crazy when people said Pearl couldn't shoot? Yeah, yeah, and I and I know that was the that was the um, I know that was the uh, the quote unquote knock on him, and I've I've um tried to uh, watch and, and and you know study a lot of his a lot of a lot of the the film uh, that they had on him, and I'm like. You know, they made it seem as though like he couldn't throw a basketball into an ocean. It's like that's that's the thing that bugs me. It's like it's 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 just so crazy, you know. But but again, that's once you know once they place that stigma on you, it's like you know they 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 try to make it stick. But you talking about Pearl Washington? Are you crazy? Like, are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Like, you see in his highlights that he's hitting fifteen footers. He's he's not, and then knock him down with ease off the dribble. So if he if he couldn't shoot, you know if he couldn't shoot, why do you you know what I mean? Like you see in the highlights, why is that consistently? You see it in the highlights. That again, he's not pulling up for Steph. Every, all everybody yeah, didn't have that range. If no. you look at Tiny Archibald, if you look at Lenny Wilkins, they all had that pull up. Yes, it was about the pull up game back yes. then. Yes, yes. It wasn't about shooting the threes. Michael Jordan didn't shoot a lot of threes. Right. Let's talk about it. Marbury. Mid- Ooh, there it go. There it go. On, that's Come regular. On. Yo, Pooh. Pooh, that's, that's a jump shot. Yes. That's a jump shot. Now, mind you, when we doing it, no lie. I ain't going to lie to you, bro. If I'm shooting from half court, even in the prime when I was thought I was all that, I was heaving it. He jumped up in the air straight. Straight up. Straight, straight up. As a matter of fact, as, as a matter of fact, it's, it's so crazy. Um, t- uh, it was a picture that I had, and then and and shout out to you know my little bro, um, Malcolm. Malcolm ended up putting it up and did and did like a uh, like a skit to it. And Steph is at the garden, and he's shooting a jump shot over Ty Miles. Um, and just the elevation, you, that is, that is, it is, is purely, um, the strength in the legs. And like, you know, people that don't know, they used to run the beach and, and, and the stairs. You don't know what kind of workout that is until you go run the beach in boots. That's, that's something that we had to do at Grady. We had to do that, uh, pr- like preseason, the preseason regiment. Before the season even started, you 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 put your you know your gear on or whatever, put your boots on. We had to run to Coney Island Beach, get on the sand, run the entire beach in boots, go to Nathan's, get napkins to prove that we ran the beach, ran back to the school in boots, <laughs> in boots. So now to my to my you don't stand, got that Nathan, you don't got the Nathan the Nathan nap- napkins. You finished. Oh, it's, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. And shout out to um Derek Jock McMahon, who was the head coach at yes, um Grady, yes, right? Yes. You would you 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 would be running on the beach and he'd be sitting there, he'd be sitting on the boardwalk like this with his legs crossed, watching. Like we leave, he's still in the school. We get to the beach, he on the boardwalk like this. Yeah, I see y'all motherfuckers. I see you. I see you more. You know, and, and and um I say all that to say they said that was Steph's regiment. Like yes. they ran the beach. All the brothers, the, all the brothers. Come yes. on. So it, it all it all makes sense. It all makes sense. And when you see him do that, it's like, listen, he could you imagine how long he was training and, and running the beach and running the stairs? And you see jumping, shooting a jump shot, a jump shot from half court. Come on, man. Right with the form. Still with the form. With regular form. When everybody else is heaving it, you see guys now when they, I think when they used to have the, uh, the skills challenge and they had to finish off by shooting my half. Yes, court. yes. You see those pros. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're not shooting. They're not, not shooting jump shots. shots. Facts. No, no. Facts. I've been seeing that he's got the form out there. I'm just gonna keep it alive. Yo, is it? Yo, this is what I, I love about Skip. 
that's one thing I love about Skip. He's so humble, and he knows. Yeah, I'm getting the fame for it now, but it was guys that's doing this before I came along. Right, right. Right? right. So we now we, we talk about the history of uh NBA point guards and what led to that. Right. Now we just discussed that, right? From the fifties all the way up. Yep. Right. And we yep. still got guards that come, right? Right. We got Boogie Flan now yeah. in high school. We got Connor yeah. Spratley. We got yeah. the Ian Jacksons. We got mm -hmm. Mel Thompson, Thomas, uh, Adam Ninjais and all of these guys that's in high school that's going to make waves in the future. Yeah, yeah. Which is how it's supposed to be. You, should, yeah. you know, it's, it's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to, just like it was back then. See, Tiny, Tiny was who he was. And from Tiny, we got Pearl. From Pearl, we got Rod. From Rod, we got, uh, from, 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 from Rod and Mark Jackson, we got Kenny A. And from Kenny, we got Steph and so on and so forth. And then, you know, then again, like I said, then you mentioned all the other guys, like I said, the Tinsleys and the Ed Coders and just, it's just so many people, so many people. And with the young guys that you just mentioned now, it's like, it's time for them to carry on the tradition, but it's also important for you to know, to know the history. You gotta like, you, you gotta know the boogers. You gotta know, I don't care if Booger, if he only played and sold in a hole. Booger was was Booger is a god. You can say whatever you want. He's a god. Skip. You got to know the skips. You got to know the boogers. You got to know the the Tinsleys. And, and you know you got to listen. You know I was somebody that was like that. I, I wanted to know everybody. I wanted to know the guy from Cali, Arizona. I wanted to know the Bam Moors, the Mook Mook Thomases. I wanted to know the guys that were in the neighborhood that that played Division One, but you know they they didn't play in the NBA, but they were still those guys. Like, I think that's one of the main, one of the main, I mean, ingredients that the kids, you have to know who came before you. You, you gotta, you gotta know that. You have to know that. And I think that's, that's where we come in. Yes. Right. Because um, if, if they don't know the names, if they don't know who to look for, if they don't know um, Sam Worthens, they don't know, mm. you know, those guys, those, you know, Ed Booger Smith, you know, yes. a lot of these guys see Booger show up to these games and they don't realize everybody was coming to watch him like they coming to mm -hmm. watch you. Yeah. Probably more people. Probably mm -hmm. more people. <laughs> no one, no one has ever went from playing street basketball to the cover, not just Come inside. Come on. Okay. They could have easily put him inside. The cover. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. They actually doing my guys is actually doing a documentary on him. Nice, nice. So, and he needs, um, he, 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 you know, well deserved. Well, well, well deserved. I, I, I submitted, I submitted something because he called me. It was like, yo, we need your voice on here. Blah blah blah. I was like, cool. I was like, yo, but when we do the thing, I want bring my crew in for the sit down. Right. Of course. You know of what I'm course. saying? Yeah. And, and, and we got some more things that's um on the line as well that uh just just something that i just think we all yeah, need yeah, to be yeah. a part of you know what i'm saying yeah, that absolutely hit me up i'll be like yo you know yeah come shoot my crew let's let's get the whole crew in, involved because absolutely. You know, absolutely um we we've been we've taken on the the, the role of being the historians for this thing yes. and the good thing about our crew is is that we just not in new york city we all over the country Right, right. You get what I'm saying, and, right. and I'm still, uh, I'm I'm still hoping that other guys in other places, you know, tap in and, and share their history. Like my guy Joe Almeida from Boston. Yes, he does a yes. great job. He does yes, a he great does. job. You, him, were the first guys I was watching, like. The way he set up his page, you see, I write on my stuff, and my, right. that's that's from Joe, right? You know, what I'm saying like, how can I make what I'm doing stand out and be different? And and I see the way he does his thing, and he knows so much of the New York City history. It it kind of made me get one point, like, Doc, this dude 
is bringing up that I'm not even bringing up. Right, right. Well, let me tell you, I'll tell you like this. See, you do that for me. You know what I mean? Because like I said, you, you know, you're, you're the elder statesman. And I say OG not because you are 20 or 30 years old. Nah, no, it's but, all respect. But you, you, know, you, you know that. And, and, and like you said, Sam Worthen and being able to say, I pl you played with Rod Strickland. See, for me, see, I'm the kind of person that when we sit down, I'm going to need you to, to give me deeds. I need to know, yo, Pooh, what was it like? Playing? So, so, so for me, it's like when you talk to certain people, I'm like, like who? Like, who is this? I'm like, wow, he, you know what I mean? So, so understand that for everybody else, what you're doing is like, yeah, you know, you're doing New York City basketball and basketball, but for me, it's like, you are that guy that's like in the park, you were older, you did it, you did it, you played division one. And now it's like, you know, you only gonna have a certain amount of people that are like, yo, so look, Pooh, tell me like, yo, what was it like? when you did this, that, and the third, and boom, 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 because certain people wanted that, but opportunity wasn't presented, and they couldn't get it. So now it's like, yo, the OG did it, and, 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 and you know, he has stories. So for me, that's, that's the joy that I get out of watching, you know, what you're doing, because you are shedding light on the people that you saw, that you looked up to, and that you saw, and might have even played with. So... That's overall is just dope. And, and for and you guys, right, or, or for my end, when I stepped away from the game, because I stepped away from the game. Right, I remember you told me, yeah. I, I think I was like 28 when I stopped playing. Mm. Mm. Like, stop. Just like, I, I played like four years of pro-am right. and then disappeared from the scene. But I wouldn't even go to any games. Mm. I knew who these guys were, but I didn't go see them play. You did, right? You, Cal, you know, Flea, you know, two. You guys came up in different eras and saw right. Right. it's just a different range, right? Right. That different right. range and, and the scope, uh, I think, kind of helps out the brand and, and everything that we're doing, man. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful thing, man. It's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, I think it's 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 going to literally it's gonna you know definitely like i said before it's gonna shake shake uh shake the room up man because you know you join for you talking about joining forces and, and and having people that do different things different lanes but the same lane come co come together collectively as one the same lane but still can do different things in their own lanes it's like you know it's it's, it's a beautiful thing man so i'm getting know i'm getting some think. positive when i'm i'm out here in these streets yeah, you know, I was up yeah. in the Bronx today. Yeah, I, I'm getting so much positive feedback for that. Wow, it's a lot wow. of positive. Trust me, it's wow. a lot of. I wow. was last week. I was sitting with Joe Hammond and Sam Worthy. Like <clears throat> we all sitting watching the game at Elmcore, chopping it up. Man, let me tell you, Joe Hammond's basketball IQ. Mm. is out of this world. Mm. The destroyer. The Listen destroyer. to me. Mm. You would love to sit down and talk basketball with him. Like, he's sitting down watching the kids, evaluating the kids. Like, I'm looking at him, I'm going to... He's the elder statesman. Brain still moving, still clicking, still seeing what the kids need to do and where they need to be. And I'm sitting there just blown away. I spent so much time talking with Sam. You know, I'm kind of used to that, but I've never sat for a couple of hours chopping it up with Joe like that. And then have both of them sitting there. It's did you ever crazy. get to see him? Did you ever get to see him play? No. Like I interviewed when I interviewed Derek, Derek told me, like, you know, seeing speaking to Sam, which I'm gonna do it in person with Sam and, and Joe. We already talked about that. Nice. But to hear them tell me, like, I asked Sam Worthen, who can you compare Joe Hammond to that played in the NBA ever? Like, so I can have a glimpse. He said, Nobody. 
nobody. He was a one of one. We was told about three years after he stopped playing, Fly Williams came to get him to play in this game. He was saying no. Finally, he agreed to go. It's just three years after he stopped playing. He went and dropped 55. This three years after he stopped playing, he wasn't playing anymore. And all he did, all he did was play strictly pro am, strictly rucker. Did he play? He didn't no, play he any played, high school. He, no, he played in he the played ABA. He played, oh, he, he played in the NBA. He played okay. in the ABA. He played in the okay. ABA. Yeah, he the played ABA. In the a- okay. I think he played either he played in the ABA or CBA, but I know he played Did for he a play stint. college? Did he play in college? I didn't ask him that, but okay. I doubt it. Is he so so him? I know Fly Williams played at Austin P. Right. That I right. know. And he played for so, the St. Louis ABA team. Yep. Yeah. Joe Hammond. I'm asking you, Joe Hammond, PB Kirkland, and Earl Manigo, are they all in the same, same um, age bracket? Like the same? There was it's the same era, right? So you got same era. You got um, Charlie Scott, who I, okay. who I had on the show, and I asked him how good was Earl Manigo, and he said uh, Earl wasn't on a level because Earl was a, like a six one. But he had super hops. He's like that dude who has super hops. Okay. But couldn't really do too much of anything okay. else. Like the other guys who are way more skilled, bigger. Right, right. You know. Scoring, have, score, score the ball. Right, right, right. So it, it was just different levels, you know. Okay. And uh, diff, different disciplines at that time. Right, 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 you know? right. Yeah, it, it, it was it was crazy. Um, man, it, it, it was just such... An amazing time. Um, I wish we can get more of this stuff on. All right, we don't have the the. Yeah. I don't even have. I'm just receiving yeah. information. I receive, right. No, I, I'm just receiving some of my games from when I played, and mm. I'm looking how grainy and old they look. Nice. Just imagine trying to get something from the '70s. It'll be. It'll be. It, it, it. They probably don't even have anything no. documented. They don't no. have anything documented. No. You know what I mean? Because no. technology. There was no technology back then. It was just word of mouth. Facts. It was word. It was word of mouth. So and, I and, think and, and word of mouth was the best social media. Yes, it was. Yes, it was because I think nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, when you heard about somebody and you heard that they were this, this, and this, when you went to see them, that's exactly what you got. Facts. If 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 you know if Mo Brown. At 40, and he destroyed the competition, right? At at five o'clock by 5:30. You on the other side of town, they're gonna say, yo, they said Mo Brown just had 40 over in such and such. You killed whoever you played against, that's Mo Brown. And then you knew. And then even when you went to go see him play, you like, now I never I never got to see Mo Brown play. I mean, only at St. John's on television, but it's like once you heard about the person, you knew, okay, they talking about him, and that means he's that he's that guy or that girl. Man, if you know, he, he talked about it as well, man, but if he goes somewhere else. Man, yo, and that's what I that's what I'm gonna I wanted to ask you that too. I yo, I heard so many stories. And I remember when I first saw him, it was like seeing like, like, like a God. We were at practice. I think I was ninth, ninth grade, JV practice, this dude walking the gym. And at the time, he's, still, he's at, what is he, a junior at St. John's? Or is he a junior or, or a senior? I'm, I'm, a fr- I'm a freshman, whatever. He walks in, <clears throat> he has this, never forget, he's black, the black Chuck of Tim's on, some jeans, a black leather jacket with like some, some, like some like like uh, uh, the chaps on the, I don't know what kind of fly leather jacket come in. He's just standing there. He say what up? And I look. I'm like yo, that's Mo Brown. I'm like yo, that's the Mo Brown. He's just standing there. Say what up? 
right? And I'll never forget. I think he spoke to us for a little bit, and then he had the ball by the bleachers. He's by the bleachers, right? If you know anything about Grady, the court is here, yeah. the bleachers is, is over there, right? A couple feet away from out of bounds. So he's standing by the bleachers. OG, he shot like five. Not even, he's out of bounds. He shot the ball five times, regular form. And I'm looking, I'm like, it's true. <laughs> that's what, that's, yo, that's what I said. I, and I'm looking, it was, it was almost like a movie. I think the ball might have rolled over to him and he picked it up and he hit the first one. Boom. Then hit the next one. Boom. Threw it back to him. Boom. And, and the gym, we just, I'm just standing there like, mind you. I come into the school, I'm telling you, freshman year, I'm reading about Mo Brown, I'm seeing this picture, little flat top, Chinese looking dude. They like, who right. fresh? I'm like, fresh. I'm like, who's that? Man, that's the fresh, Mo Brown. I'm like, oh word. I'm reading about, I'm like, damn, this dude, this dude must have really been good. And he was only 5'8, five, 5'9. Five, I'm like, what? And it's it can happen for me. It can that's happen. What, <laughs> OG. OG, listen. That's and that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, yo. And then I think the greatest part of the whole thing was just how gracious he is, just how humble he is, just how, like, talk about a great dude, man. He, he sat down, did the live, man, and he was just like, just a, 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 a beautiful hum, human being, man, but just, you know, a legend, a legend. And, and you were going to say, let me ask you, if he doesn't go to St. John's, he goes somewhere else, what kind Scott, of career you could, Sky's right? the limit. Right. Sky's the limit. Scott's limit because you know he was fearless. He is somebody mm. that that could shoot the rock. He yes. had the handles. He can pass. He was a floor general. He had all those things, all of those things, you know. And he was he was strong, so he yeah. he was gonna be Stop. a pushover. And he didn't right. care what size you was. Right. Man, listen, brother, it's about that time, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you already know. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. We we when. We come on again. We need to do yeah. something about Lloyd Daniels. Yeah. I'm gonna give you oh, some crazy stories about yo, Lloyd Daniels. Yo, you, this is yo, you, yo. I swear to God, and, and, and I'm sitting here like, yo, we gotta talk about Lloyd. I'm looking at the time. I'm like, we never probably not gonna get the Lloyd, but I need some Lloyd Daniels stories, man. I just met him. I met him. Um, my son had a tournament out in Florida, and he, you know, he coaches. Yes. Right. And I met him. He's just standing there watching the game. I turn around. I'm like, yo, that's Lloyd Daniels. I'm telling my wife. I'm telling my mother. My mother-in-law, they're looking at me like, who? My mother-in-law knew who he was, though, because she was like, oh, that, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, his his story. And yeah. I was like, yes, that's, yeah. But um, legend. 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 And, and then uh, I, I'll, we'll, we'll do it when I, I'll tell you the story of uh, okay. when I played for the mob. True story. Mm. Mm. <laughs> crazy. Yo, Good. yo, listen, man. I can't, man. I can't wait. You know, I listen, man. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk Tuesday, 7 30, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, okay, we okay, on okay. 7 Thursday. I All mean right, 7 30 right. Tuesday, you know. Yeah, yeah. We come yeah, together. Yeah. Uh yeah. but listen, man, everybody out there, my basketball heads, I appreciate you guys. For coming through. Yo, Ron, thank you, man. I appreciate OG. you, brother. Yo, OG, listen, you you're gonna be it. seeing this guy face a lot more, all right, along with the crew. Um, we definitely gonna be bouncing on each other's pages, uh, doing a lot of shows, man. So make sure sure's. you follow and subscribe to A Game Podcast on all platforms. A game podcast. It's easy to remember. Yes, sir. It's my guy. Much love, OG. I appreciate you. Tuesday. No doubt. Definitely. All right. No doubt. Man, time flies, right, when you're having fun. Um, again, I'd like to salute my brother, Ron Soufrant, CEO of A Game Podcast. Salute to my guy, Cal, All Things Hoops. Salute to my guy, Tucson, All Ball TV. And salute to my guy, Flea. Are we live? Podcast. So I want you to follow and subscribe to all these guys' YouTube page, Instagram, Facebook. You know, 
Uh, we also are on Apple, Google, Spotify as well. So make sure you tap in. Salute to everybody out there. Thank you for joining us. Spread the word. Share this live. I would like to thank everybody who came through the room. Um, man, we had a lot of people stop through. Raw McCants, salute. I got to bring you up one day, my guy, for sure. Keep wisdom. Fine wine. Salute. Cassie Edge, salute. Appreciate you. Coach Biggs, appreciate you, brother. Um, Basil, salute to my people in Jersey, for sure. Who else on the check-in? All things hoops, like I said, Eric Kennedy. Appreciate you guys and girls. Marcel Smith, thank you. Appreciate you. Born Savior, appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for checking in. Jay Fabby, appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Wayne Jones, thank you for checking in. Delbert Prince, appreciate you. The Hoop Post, yo, Chris, I'm going to hit you up as soon as I get off here. Well, I'm about to get out of here. I am your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And you've been watching Basketball Heads Live, the podcast on NYC Basketball Network. We are the official home for New York City basketball. I think I have something here for you guys. Oh, yeah. You know, I always got to show that merch. This is the slogan. This is the merch. We got hoodies, hats, T-shirts, sweatshirts, sweatsuits, sneakers, coats. We all going on sale. We out. Peace. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready?